and I'd like to welcome everyone for the last session of our C3 conference, although please, please consider staying for the networking afterwards and the closing announcements. And so I'd very much like to introduce our colleague, Jan Brulette, who in uh, a so-called Furious Five, which is going to be a little bit longer, will be telling us about comic book chemistry part nine and a half, remedy to COVID dullness. Take it away, Jan. All right, can everybody hear me? Perfect, perfect. All right, so um, as some of you know, I love superheroes so much, I never thought I would be fed up of wearing a mask, right? Um, sometimes we say that uh, our virtual meetings are basically like modern seances, right? There's someone who wants to join us. Are you there? We can't hear you. Can you hear us? I can't see you but I will assume that you are learning, engaged in my classroom. But in these hard times, I think it's important to see the positive. So I've taken this decision to always try to get the most out of every situation. That has helped me. Um, for example, when we, we look at the teaching, of, uh, teaching progression, we can analyze it and, and compare it to Jack Nicholson's face. After 10 years of teaching, we just go a bit cuckoo. After 20 years of teaching, we go mad and online teaching might have driven us to be cuckoo crazy mad. But <clears throat> as I said, I'm trying to get the most positive out of every situation. So when I see how some people are wearing their masks, I stop judging. I realize that, okay, now I understand how contraceptives fail. When I get a lousy t-shirt for my birthday during COVID, I don't assume that I just tell bad, bad jokes. My kids love my jokes and that's perfect. But the joke is actually on them because the atomic numbers and the atomic symbol on these t-shirts are wrong. But I try to look at it the positive way and I say, I could use this t-shirt to ask my students in class to correct it, to give me the correct answer. I mean, even the Joker in comic books plays with the chemical symbols. By putting boron, argon, and fluoride one beside each other, he played a prank into on um, this uh, chemical faculty where uh, he spelled out, as you guessed it, barf. So, as you know, I love using comics to teach chemistry. And I think it surely takes a little bit of uh, the dullness of the COVID, the stressful situation, and gives it a little bit of a laugh and actually allows students and I to engage in serious discussions. When I say I use comic books, I'm not talking about infographics, although they're very, very useful. And as another talk just said, they're, they're, they're very practical. And there's this these guys that are making the uh, infographics at compound interest that you should look at because they're very, very well done, and they incite discussion. They incite discussions such as, you know, there's no link between the corona beer and the coronavirus. Although there's a big conspiracy online with virtual videos saying that the future got predicted in the 2011 film Captain America, the first Avenger, where second World War uh, soldier Steve Rogers is brought to our present time in Times Square, and behind him you can notice the corona beer and what seemed to be like a virus. But as all good researchers, we know that we need to dig more than just the surface. We need to research. And this is what William Lally did. He researched using YouTube videos of Times Square made at the time where the movie was shot. He figured out that the scene was shot in April 2011. And therefore, uh, by mixing videos from YouTube and mixing Google Maps, he was able to get an enhanced version of what was this coronavirus. Ah, that ring the bell. He was able to dig in a bit deeper and realize that this is not a coronavirus. This is pasta, spaghetti. They're not the enemy of anyone. Well, maybe gluten is sometimes, but you know, you need to go a bit further. Um, other kind of characters have tried to predict the future. Same thing for the Spider-Man in issue 176. Actually, Spider-Man is facing a new villain called Corona. And whenever she comes into town, the people uh, feel under raging fever and sudden fatigue. But don't worry, folks, the scientists group together and figure out an antidote. One of the best prediction made in time books, though, comes from Archie. In Betty, number 46, published in February 1997, there is a comic book where Betty goes to high school in the future in 2021. This is not Photoshop, it's true. And how does she study? How does she follow class? Through her computer and her camera. And they even had that comic book. One of the questions that was just raised a few seconds ago, should we have our cameras on or not? 
Here, there's a little sign saying video monitor must remain uncovered at all times. In this issue, they even predicted that some students would try to skip class. And that's why you have Veronica <clears throat> trying to skip class by putting a doll of herself in front of her computer. Another comic book or European comic book had Asterix and the Chariot of Race on a, published on October 2017, facing an evil opponent by the name of coronavirus. By the end of the book, the coronavirus got, uh, uh, they got rid of the coronavirus. And even though this story took place a while ago, well, for normal humans, same thing for thousands of years, long before they knew about germs or viruses, people have known of the disinfecting powers of copper. Copper, as far as 3200 BC, um, was designated with the ink symbol representing eternal life to denote copper in hieroglyphs. And this is not a real hieroglyph. Copper uh, didn't get, uh, sorry, copper was used in many different applications. Children didn't get diarrhea as frequently when they drank water that sat overnight in a copper vessel. Soldiers, the Phoenician, inserted shavings from their bronze swords into battle wounds to prevent infection. Why is that? Because the free electron in copper outer orbital shell easily takes part in redox reactions. When a microbe lands on copper, ions prevent the cell respiration and punches holes in the cell membrane or the viral coating, which creates free radicals that accelerates the kill. All these concepts, free electron, redox reactions, ions, free radicals, are all concepts that we teach to our students. But this gives us a little opportunity to put them into context. Um, the coronavirus is very resistant and it can last up to four hours on copper surfaces, but it lasts for days on other types of fabric. Before, copper beds, copper uh, doorknobs, copper rails were used in hospitals. But as you know, copper tarnishes, it turns green. And because of that, it doesn't have a good look. So that's why many of the hospitals have, have opted for an option that relates on plastic or uh, stainless steel. But like any good superheroes, copper is back. Copper alloys uh, can make beds with self-disinfecting uh, surfaces. So the fact that it is, it is an alloy, it doesn't turn green as much. It doesn't turn green at all, actually. So therefore, there are a bunch of new beds that have been made and created and were, uh, are used in different hospitals. One hero, though, that we like to turn green is the Hulk. Right, and any virus that enters the Hulk bloodstream will be destroyed. That's the legend in the comic books, except of course for the zombie virus, but that's a whole other story. So we know from the images in the comic books that the Hulk bleeds green. So does his blood contain copper? Actually, copper containing blood does exist, but it's not green. It's either blue or transparent. That's the case of the horseshoe crab. All right, the horseshoe crab has blue blood. And it's actually very useful for testing pharmaceuticals because this blood uh, detects bacterial contamination at very, very low concentration. But green blood does exist in certain animals. If ever it contains chlorochlorine or biliverdin, um, it will color the blood green. green sorry. So tobacco hornworms, for example, or certain types of leeches and the skink lizard all have green blood. Is it possible for humans to have green blood? Well, yes. There's actually a very rare condition called sulfamoglobinemia, which uh, gives the pigment a greenish color. Uh, so it colors the blood green and also colors certain organ fat color as well. But don't worry, if your kid's all covered in green paint, he's not suffering from this rare condition. All you need is some soap. And one thing that we tr truly have in large amounts, if you've hoarded some soap during the pandemic, are hand sanitizers. What can you do with all this excess hand sanitizer? Well, you could be like Captain Marvel and have blue flaming hands. Yes, as we know, hand sanitizers contain a large amount of ethanol. And one of the properties of ethanol is that it's transparent, but whenever it burns, it burns with a blue color. So if ever you put a Purell on over your hand and set it on fire, you will create blue flames. But yeah, that's freaking dangerous. I totally agree with you. And if you look at all these videos that are online about that, um, they're all in slow motion because the burning sensation after two or three seconds is just too much. So all these videos have been put into slow motion. So don't do that. Be like Captain Marvel, wear red gloves. So you can easily buy red gloves that are uh, anti-inflammatory. So not anti-inflammatory, that, that won't burn. So you can spray, spray a lot of 
uh, hand sanitizer on it and then flame them on. This is what I've done for a video about the blue flaming hands like Captain Marvel. So whenever you turn off the light, you will see this blue flame coming out, uh, reducing some of the danger associated with that. So the moral of the story, make sure that you always wash your hands. In conclusion, I just wanna say that we have a luxury. We have a luxury to teach chemistry. And chemistry is one of the best disciplines there is, right? And it is a luxury because chemistry is everywhere. So we could use our passion, history, the news, anything that we like that surround us to teach chemistry, to engage in different discussion and to inspire others. And let's not forget to have some fun. Because after all, if knowledge is powers, teachers can be superheroes. So I'd like to thank you all for organizing this uh, <clears throat> C3 event and to do a shameless plug for my ChemCurious YouTube channel if ever you wanna see more comic book chemistry stuff related, don't uh, hesitate to go and enjoy.